what are trees saying to each other about climate change? Well, we know around the world that forests are stressed from climate change. Um, we see it in forest diebacks, we see it in inf insect infestations, we see it in just drought affected forests. Like this one. Yeah, like here in Vancouver, which is in a rainforest, when we dug down into the soil, it was dry. Um, and, you know, even in parks like Sani Park, you can see that the crowns are starting to um, lose their needles. There's some other insects that are coming in and kind of like a downward spiral for the tree. Like once it gets drought stricken, then it's easier for it to get infected by other things and it can send it down into a spiral. Um, so when trees get stressed like that, they actually communicate their stress levels to each other. And we found that when we drought stress one of the seedlings or infect it with a pathogen, that it will send signals through its mycorrhizal networks to the neighboring trees. Um, and those trees detect those signals and they upregulate their own defense machinery. They increase their defense enzyme production and they try to defend themselves against what that stressor was. Another thing that we're trying in our experiments is we're actually migrating genotypes from warmer climates or more southerly climates northward or to cooler climates. And, and that's called assisted migration and that's happening more and more in our forests. Um, so assisted migration is a real thing that's happening at a, at a big landscape scale. Um, you know, generally about 10% of of a seedlings that may be planted could be from migrated mm. genotypes. And what we're finding in, in our mother tree experiments is that when you leave, when you protect the old trees, that the new mi migrants have a better chance. Interesting. Trees are clearly stressed out by climate change. Take forest fires, for example. We're already seeing longer, hotter, drier fire seasons and more intense wildfires. And that means more carbon is being released into the atmosphere. But sometimes, you have to burn trees to save trees. Talk to me, Robert Gray. Show me your laboratory. Good morning. I'm Bob Gray, and we're doing fire science. In fact, we're doing prescribed burning with fire effects monitoring. One of our objectives with prescribed fire is certainly uh, trying to kill some trees, typically small trees that are starting to grow. Um, in the understory and uh, if we have too many of those trees when there is a fire then what can happen is uh, those trees torch and they spread fire from the surface into the overstory tree. If we don't do the burning then we're going to have wildfire. As you can see we haven't killed all the small trees. After a certain height we just can't kill trees very easily with spring prescribed burning. It's okay because we need these small trees to start to fill in some of these gaps any of the trees that were killed in the fire, we use the term top kill, which means that the stem that's above the ground is girdled by the fire and that releases a hormone. And then the roots will produce thousands and thousands of suckers. So where there used to be a dozen trees here this year, by next year, there could be about 50,000 trees. I think we're burning between seven and 10,000 hectares a year. And we should be burning on the order of 100,000 to maybe 200,000 hectares a year. So we're, we're falling way short of that and our ecosystems need it. 